Okay. Hello, everybody. So, hi, I'm Tiffany Carlson. I want to welcome all of you back to Spinalpedia's Disability Employment Success Stories. My name is, uh, well, I'm the executive director of Spinalpedia.com, and we are joined by Garrison Red. He is from Brooklyn, New York, and we're really excited to share his employment journey with you. So, hello, Garrison. Welcome. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I really is, appreciate it. This is awesome. I've been following you online, so it's really great to see you on video, and this is going to be fun. So uh, thank you again for joining us. So let's start from the beginning about how you were injured. I know you have a spinal cord injury, so if you don't mind sharing, how were you injured? Um, I was injured by a gunshot wound when I was 17 years old. Okay. Um, the bullet actually burnt the nerve surrounding my spinal cord. Whoa. Um, oh. It didn't sever it, thank God, but okay. Um, okay. Th that's why I have, that's what makes me paraplegic. All I, right. I so what, what level are you? I'm a T12. Okay, that's nice. So at least you have some of your ab movement and you're, se you are 17. So how old are you today? I'm 31 currently. All right. So you've been paralyzed for a while. And so I kind of like to start from where, when people were paralyzed, you know, since you were 17, what was, what was going on in your life? I, you know, were you thinking about even after your injury, were you thinking, well, I better get to work or what was your mind regarding getting back to work and that kind of thing when you were first injured? Or was that even on your on your mind well, it, it kind of was i mean at 17 years old i was going into my senior year of high school so i'm preparing for college um at that time i played football i was a standout running back for james madison high school which is in brooklyn new york cool. and um my goal was like just to go off to university play football and wherever that leads me then I'll be an adult and off into the real world where either I was going to be a football player or I'll be working. Like, yeah. Just and in I, that particular order. So I guess the football thing wasn't going to happen after your yeah. injury, right? Exactly. Yeah. So pretty mm -hmm. much um, that's when I had to, you know, focus totally on academics. So the first thing was because I was in rehabilitation when I graduated high school. Oh, wow. So. With that said, it was the next step was college. Like how mm -hmm. I'm adjusting to my new abilities, of course. Yeah. I didn't want to go off to like a trade school because some people was, you know, pretty much pushing me like to do trade work. And no, I like, no, like, I don't want to do no. trade work. I no. want to do something mm -hmm. where I'm very intelligent and yeah. I'm be an academic. So I want to do something. I don't well, know, be a finance major or whatever, but I have yeah. other talents than just being an athlete at that time in life. So let, who helped you brainstorm some um, ideas on what you could do? Did you talk with the vocational people or was there someone at your college, or I'm sorry, at your high school that you spoke with? No, actually it was my mother. She said, you're going to school. You're not going to be in a house. So <laughs> basically from mm -hmm. that, I had to go to school. Like I knew I had to go to school. So okay. Um, at the time when I actually got out the hospital, it was yeah. probably, I already had graduated, but it probably was at a time where like the semester had already started, the college semester. Oh. So it um, registered like right away. So it was like a little bit of a, about six month period in between. Okay. Um, getting out the hospital and then me actually going back into school. Which is normal, by the way. I mean, that's yeah. totally normal. It takes time to adjust. Exactly, exactly. And, um, but I was in rehab for 11 months just so that I could be independent and be, my mother would feel comfortable enough to let me go off to school by myself because mm -hmm. I'm an only child also. Oh, so. oh you are? Only child, all of that <laughs> stuff. It's like, all right. I, she's like, I got to keep you like close by at all times type of thing. But no. But I was so independent that she was comfortable enough that like, time for you to go to school you can't be in a house so well thank god for your mom so where'd you end up going to school first i went to kingsborough community college okay just to get back into the realm of things and i got my associate's degree there okay. and then i went to york college which is in queens new york um and i got my bachelor's degree in finance from there finance so why did you choose finance i'm always curious when people choose that degree because that's like something i was never interested in <laughs> well i was good at math okay and mm -hmm. i was like uh, I don't know what I'm going to be. No one ever knows what they're going to be, you know, right. in school. Like, I don't know why they put you in college and have you make that <sighs> pretty much very important decision for the, 
that's gonna might be with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, I know. It's very hard to make that decision. They're gonna tell you what you're gonna be when you're 18 years old, what you wanna be. So I took finance because I was like, maybe I could be a day trader. Yeah. Do at home, you know, comforts of my home. I don't have to go too far if I don't want to. Yes. Make yeah. a lot of money. And I said, Smart. Yeah, let me do finance. And then <laughs> I was a lot of people said I should have got became like a teacher and stuff like that. But I was like, I don't like writing and <laughs> I don't like having to read like long textbooks and you know, a yeah. lot of literature. Um, so I said math was always came natural to me. So I said, I'm gonna do something in that field. That's awesome. So you got your bachelor's in finance. And so that must have been you're right on track. Were you 22, 23 when you graduated then? Yeah, I was right around that age. I think I was 20, yeah, 22, like 22, mm -hmm. 22. Did you receive any, I like, um, I, did you receive any state vocational supports for your college to help pay or anything like all that? All right. So this is how it works. Um, well, in New York State, there are services. Okay. However, when you're in a, when you suffer a spinal cord injury, um, typically you don't know anyone else that has a spinal cord injury. Your family doesn't. It's all new. It's a new world. Yeah. And um, in a hospital, social workers tell you about these things, but they never use the services, so they don't really know, necessarily know how to navigate the different avenues mm -hmm. of the service. Mm -hmm. So my first semester, like my parents just, I, I registered, my parents paid the tuition. Okay. And then I got hooked up with the, disability i found out there was an ada department with yeah. school i got connected with them then he was telling me about certain grants that i could apply for yeah. um, due to my injury and you know it's all it's a whole other ballpark of it's a lot so i ended up mm -hmm. um actually getting my whole entire school paid for oh um, no way that's yeah. awesome i got a scholarship and part of the scholarship went towards my um, tuition. And then I actually got like another grant to go along with that. Okay. Which and then that's how we figured it out. That that's amazing. Wow. So you got to. My mom was in that field as well. Oh, cool. That probably helps them. So you got your degree. So tell us a little bit about what went into landing your first job after graduation. Oh my God. That's like a whole story. I'm going to give you the whole story. Though. I need the cliff notes. So the cliff notes and the good stories. So, for instance, like in ideally, a person goes to college, get their degree, they have a few jobs lined up, you know, they go on multiple, a few interviews, whatever the case may be, they get offers, and then they decide. Um, when you have a disability, I found out the hard way that even though you can be qualified and fit every standard and description that they may need, yep. they, especially if it's a physical disability, they see the wheelchair as a liability. <sighs> Don't say that. That happened to you? Oh, no. I went over, I could say, probably like 30 interviews, like on a consistent basis for probably almost like seven months. No way. That's yeah. a lot. And was it their in-person interviews? So like once they saw your wheelchair, did they just go, no? They, I mean, you don't get the call back. So you don't get the call back. no. Got it. However, that makes I stayed persistent. Okay. And actually I still was interning as a day trader. Okay. One day the IRS called, cause I, I met this lady at a basically a disability convention and oh. she wanted to pass my resume along to the a hiring manager at the Internal Revenue Service and they'll set you up an appointment to come in and take a, a test or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And then um I called the lady back to follow up like a week and a half later and she's yeah. like, Oh, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. Come in and take the test tomorrow. And okay. I started working at the IRS for six years and I did it was pretty well working for the federal government. Whoa. I guess I can't really ask you too much about that job since it's the government work. But did you, did, was, was it a good job? Was it one of those jobs you had to go into the office every day and that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great job um, mm -hmm. as far as just, it's, it's simple. Like as far, I don't like, you know, everybody has different levels um, in, in regards to their disability. Yeah. Um, and they have different comfort levels as well. So some people are more comfortable just working in their cubicle to their yeah. self, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. if you're that type of person, then you will. It's a job that you will love, honestly. Okay. 
it's very, very accommodate. They give you a reasonable accommodation. Good. That I was going to ask you that. So yeah. uh, that job, well, you're a paraplegic and you had a, a cubicle job, but you probably didn't need much in the ways of accommodations. But if you, exactly. what did you need? Um, I really actually didn't need anything other than, um, you know, occasional, like the FMLA and things of that nature. Right, right. Um, yeah. Because that, that does, you know, become important when you have a spinal cord injury. Oh, you know it. Because there's hell of there's There's doctor's appointments and whatever else could come up where you're just not exactly. going to make it. Exactly. So you worked there for six years and then what happened? Then one day I had an epiphany at work and I was like, I'm way too cool for this. <laughs> and I, I, and from that epiphany, I started thinking about how can I help the disabled community because I was training in a gym. Okay. Um, because I'm a power power lifter as yeah. well. Yeah. And I was training gym people who used to say like I motivated them or other wheelchair users would reach out to me and like I inspired them, you know, mm -hmm. just to be active and to try to keep yourself physically healthy as much as possible. Yeah. And then I said, I would love to help people. Like I would love to help people that been in my position and suffered some of the hardship that I faced where I could help them through whatever they're going through. Yeah. So from then, like a week later, I run into my godfather. Actually, he started a clothing line. I was like, I want you to be the model for it. <laughs> and from there, I started modeling. And yeah. I started modeling on a consistent basis. No way. And I said, um, I wanted to start. And then that thing in the back of my mind, like, I need to do something. And then I met this lady and she, through modeling, she was like, you should start an organization. And yeah. From there, I started my organization, which is the Garrison Red Project. Oh, cool. Uh, to help children with disabilities. Um, I was adaptive sports, adaptive yoga, things of that nature. Nice. But I had a, another purpose of starting it, and that was to bring an inclusive environment together to help decrease the unemployment rate. Because mm -hmm. I realized that a lot of people do not give opportunities to individuals with disabilities, especially mm -hmm. individuals that use wheelchairs. No. Because they don't understand the capabilities and the the abilities that individuals have that, mm -hmm. that have to use a wheelchair. Yep. So from there, that was my, or, or the other purpose, the other side of the cause of starting. Cool, cool. Because so you started this foundation after you left the IRS and then yeah. you made this into your full-time job then? Is that what you're and saying? Then, and then also I power lift, then I started, um, then I have a lot of other things going on as far as like modeling. I'm in a few commercials. Acting. No way. Really? I'm in a McDonald's commercial. And a Google yeah. commercial. Uh, you're in a McDonald's commercial. That probably pays pretty good. You don't got to tell me, but I bet it does. It's all right. That's awesome. I'm loving it, man. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's really cool. So you're obviously now you're like technically a self-employed person. Then, Correct. Right? Yes. Okay. So I'm the same boat. I 10.99 myself every year. We could talk about that on a separate podcast, but let's. Um, I have only a couple more questions for you. So, what do you like most about your current, you know, job and just working in general? I get to help people. Like every day I wake up, I'm making an impact on this world. I'm helping yeah. bring people together because ultimately, what this world needs is just more positivity, more people out here willing just to make a difference and make people happy and make people yeah. feel good about themselves. Yeah. And that's, that's like what fulfills my day to day. Keep me going. That's great. You know, sometimes you just can't work in a cubicle every day for eight hours. You just yeah, can't. with no, no windows or anything. No, you can't do that. I work from home. I couldn't personally do an office job um, away from home, but a lot of people do. So, all the power to him, but I'm glad that you found something that feeds your passion in life, Garrison. That's really cool. So, okay, last question. Um, what advice would you give to people with disabilities who are interested in working? To never give up. And another thing I would always tell them is to do their research. Just like do your research yeah. on different companies, see what their hiring rate is and things yeah. of that nature. Yep. But um, you have to be persistent and you have to always follow up and just, and you got to network. You got to stay outside. You got you to gotta get outside if you can. Yeah. Network, let people know that you're looking for work and that you're, you're, you're out there, right? Like, hey, look at me. Everybody. Yeah. Just say, I need a job. I need a job. Or, and and job, 
You're that job fair you went to. Would you recommend that as well? Yeah. Um, like there's a, I don't know, depending on what state you live in, um, the federal government has like ADA job fairs during like disability employment week and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, I would say go there, pass your resume along, make sure you go to one of those, if you can, go to a resume writing class or something yeah. along those lines, or so just fun. have a friend, a peer, just, you know, revise it or edit it or just take a look at it. Totally. Yeah, ask your friends and family for some free help, you know, there's people out there that you probably know who can help you out, so... Yeah. That's some good tips. But Garrison, I'm so happy that I got to talk with you and that you, you know, thanks for sharing your story with us. I, you have a really interesting story and I, I hope that people who are watching are going to check out your website. Where can they find it? They can find my website, the Garrison Red Project.org. Also, you can find me on Instagram, Garrison Red. You can find me on Facebook, Garrison Red, on YouTube, Garrison Red. Garrison Red. Garrison Red. <laughs> Well, maybe you'll be in a TV show or something next, right? That would yeah, be cool. Google me. <laughs> That's okay, I well, I would love to see. This is the moment for disabled um, people with disabilities being in you know, commercials and, and everything. So I think this is, I mean, right? This is a, it's I hot. think this is a movement. It's like it's, it's, it's time for a change and we're making it. Yeah. People, I mean, like me. Yeah. I can't believe that you're in a commercial. Well, keep doing it. You know, I love hearing about people trying new careers later in their lives. It's never, never too late to change it up. So... Thank you. And yeah, and I'm sure your journey is going to help everyone out there who's watching. So have a um, great weekend and good luck Thank with you. all of your future uh, endeavors, Garrison. I appreciate that. It was great speaking with you and I love what you're doing. All right. Thanks, Garrison. Have a great one. All Bye. Right, have a good one.